<laughs> Fight us emot. <laughs> Nej, jag fick ögat. <laughs> Welcome to Mirage Game Studios. My name is Toby, I'm the community manager and lead artist and I'm joined today by... Joakim, I'm the composer, sound designer and audio programmer at Mirage Game Studios. In this video we're going to talk about game audio for Space for Sale. And if you're not aware, you can check out the trailer over here. But in brief, in Space for Sale you are a small astronaut exploring alien planets and building homes and communities for alien clients in space. So we are here on location in... Joachim's studio in Gothenburg, and what are we going to do today? We're gonna record some foley for the creature called Rotblob. The Rotblob is part of the space rot infestation that's sort of an antagonist of the game. So when you arrive at your new planet, you're gonna find out that it's infested with this alien parasite called space rot. And in order to make it inhabitable, you're going to have to research antigen and uh, sort of an antivirus in order to combat it. And it's an important part of the game, and we want to make it sound really good, right? Oh yeah. We have received a memo from uh, Simon, our game director, that kind of describes what the rot blob should look like and should feel like. Uh, so we know that the uh, rot blob looks and moves like a fat worm with malicious intent. <laughs> it has slow and steady movement, uh, and it kind of slides and slithers like a snake. It will explode after a short delay if it com comes into contact with something, and uh, it is also more charming than scary. We have some audio-specific requests. The actual explosion that the creature does slows down the player, so it would make sense if uh, the sound feels rather sticky or slimy more than a snappy and solid bang. So we will talk a little bit about how we will do that. So a lot of times this is how the process works, right? We get some sort of brief from design or from our game director, and then we, from the art team, we, we start to concept and build something. And usually you're a part already from the start, right? Yes. To get some inspiration and so. But how how is your process from there when you got like a task like this? How do you make it come alive? Yes. Um, usually. As you said, I'm, I'm part of the process a bit early to kind of be in on some art talks and get to see the creatures uh, come alive and uh, that, that helps me kind of solidify a feeling for that type of creature. So in this case, I would look at the rot blob animations, uh, each specifically for, for quite some time and kind of list the key features in each animation that I that kind of stands out for me and that I feel like, okay, this this needs a proper sound. So for the rot blob, for instance, it has all of this like big movements with its eyes and its tails and it's kind of, it, it moves with its whole body. So it doesn't have a lot of small things going for it. Uh, uh, and I, can't, I want this creature to feel a bit like a splashy, nice slug that you don't want over yourself. Yeah. What I wanted to do was figure out what type of uh, actual materials do I need to record for the the, the rot blob uh, and uh, what kind of textures can we use for uh, to for the different characteristics so I was looking for stuff that was not so crunchy per se but more slushy and maybe a little bit squishy splurty uh, maybe some tears so I bought some ravioli for like good <laughs> slushy elements. I bought some uh, some balloons for some popping, and we have some tomatoes. We I bought some oranges, some celery. We have some milk. It it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be very messy. And here we are. Joachim has invited us to partake in a Foley session for the Space Rob Blob. We're going to actually capture the actual sound that we're going to use in the game, right? It's going to be really messy. We're going to start with some uh, Revioli and... Uh, name flot. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some squirts and some squeezes and some splats. And of course, the opening. And the opening. We only get one take of this, so it's very important. Uh, hang on. Opening ravioli can.
That is wild. <laughs> Ravioli is kind of really nice because it has uh, it has a good smell to it. <laughs> it's kind of pleasant to work with. <laughs> so what I want to do is kind of I first I first want some short splats and get uh, kind of simulate some sort of movement in the squeezes. Okay, cool. All right, so our next victim up for destruction is this guy, right? Yeah, the tomato. Why did you choose the tomato? The tomato is very useful in, in, in many ways. It has a, a fairly thick skin. Unlike me, I see your comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be nice, be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, the tomato is really nice because it, it has a fairly thick skin, but also a soft inside and quite a lot of water to it. So we can get some nice rips and tears from it while getting some good splats and squishes, which is what we want. Mm. Okay, show me. It is so hard to not laugh during this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy keeping a straight face is weird. Moving on to oranges. This is this is a nice fruit. It smells very good, and it, it will make our breakfast bowl feel more complete. All jokes aside, the orange is really, really good. Also, in in similar aspect to the tomato, with it has a thick shell but a lot of juicy stuff in, so you can. Play around with it quite a lot. A lot of textures, right? Yes. Get now. Do some squirts and squeezes. Uh, honestly, I would totally use this for like something circling, like. Yeah, that was powerful. It almost, right? it, it almost had like a vocal quality yeah. to it. Like, like a, a tiny... A tiny bit, like a little creature going... Yeah. If you... Own a, like, I would totally play around with that. If I if I would make like a tiny insect creature, or, or I, this layered with a high-pitched human shriek or something could be really, really cool. Fight us in the mood. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fighting. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're gonna add some milk because it doesn't look as na nice as we want it to be. So we're gonna add some milk. It's a good sound too. Yeah, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Balloon in uh, liquid. Two. Deep bone. Nah, I'm, I'm a messy boy.
So when working in game audio, what is sort of the, the goal you have in mind? What is the experience that you want to convey to the players? I, I want the players to, to feel like the sound and music that they hear really f- fits in with the world and fits in with the gameplay. I love working kind of tightly with the visuals and, and see if I can heighten something or help improve a feeling. Especially in Space for Sale where the camera objective is kind of up and and tilted a little bit mostly. And there's a lot of art stuff that you guys do that, that is very, very nice and polished. But sometimes the angle of the camera might not show that. And if I can help kind of heighten these things with with audio i feel like it, it can really sell the sell the world to the player a bit more it, it helps bring out the immersion i also don't think that sound on its own can kind of carry anything so it, it really needs to work tightly with the different disciplines on uh, especially in implementation like it, it needs to f- feel right when the sound is triggered and i guess that that's, that's important for me. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, there are plenty more videos on the channel. And if you want to get in touch with us, we are available through like Discord and, and Twitter and uh, Instagram and all those social media channels. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us, Joachim. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's uh, it was messy and fun. Messy and fun. Yeah. And until next time. Bye. Hey. I just wanted to touch it again. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs>